and great to be together with you in this very uh, very unusual time unusual in not being together and we're kind of used to it now almost after seven or eight months but uh, it's it's, uh, it's a gift that we can be together in this way it's great to see so many old friends meaning long time friends i think a bit better way of putting it long time friends and from the sangha from the community and other other new folks who've joined us since we've been online and uh, feel free if you'd like to to um, to put your um, where you're where you're living or calling from in the uh, rename yourself up in the corner of your where the, the dots are if you'd like to I've been in a, a situation in the last six weeks where I've been doing before we do our class I've been doing an online session through insight timer so I've actually been on with people all over the world we had about 600 people on today and folks from you know a lot from Europe and even from from uh, Australia um, you know where it's the middle of the night now and uh, again it's, it's, it's great probably you know probably 30 or 40 countries and um, it's great to be able to, to, to be together and practice in these ways and, and here we are I think probably everyone or close to everyone on our, our sessions our Sunday morning sessions um, in the US um, maybe one or two from Europe um, but uh, we're all in the middle of uh, this period as well as the pandemic and uh, uprising for racial justice. We're in the middle of the electoral season and probably many, perhaps most of us are very keenly engaged. Um, many of us have been um, sending letters as what something that we can do of, of value in uh, in states where the outcome is uh, is pretty much a foregone conclusion, so it's our votes maybe um, aren't so crucial. I mean, obviously they're all crucial, but but aren't going to make a you know a, a critical difference where we are in in particularly in Virginia, Maryland, and and DC. Um, but we can do things by calling in and texting, etc. And many of us are doing that. And in the effort that we've had over the last month or two um, to send letters, um, we've been using uh, vote, vote Forward to irregular voters. We've actually sent many thousands of letters now, we're counting them up, um, you know, some, some thousands of letters to encourage people, personal letters, to, to encourage people to, to vote. And, and doing that in a non-partisan way, you know, not talking about candidates or particular policies, but encouraging people to vote and kind of increasing the numbers. And, you know, for myself and probably for, um, for many of you, um, feeling hopeful, um, but by no means sanguine, no, no chickens being counted at this stage or drapes being measured, um, as it were, all the, these metaphors, but hopeful that we, that we may be moving in a direction of, of a more um, caring and compassionate um, government and leadership, um, which is so necessary in the time that we're living in. And uh, just acknowledging that as the kind of the reality that we're we're in that we're we're swimming in in these times because it affects how we're showing up you know we'll be showing up with our with our emotions and with our stresses and with our anxieties anyone feeling any anxiety uh, any uh, anyone feeling any uh, any hope any sense of uh, hope and possibility <laughs> Yeah, so just acknowledging what's here without uh, without wanting to uh, exacerbate anything or or pre prejudge anything, but recognizing that this is how we're how we're how we're showing up today is is uh, with 
with the concerns we have, with the, with the life situations that we have, with the health context we have, with the financial living situation that we have, that we, we show up as we are. And um, so really wanting to welcome each and every one of you and each and every one of us to our, to our online session today. The, the theme I want to, um, to focus on today is really the theme of, of allowing, of allowing ourselves to experience whatever we're experiencing, allowing ourselves to feel whatever we're feeling. This practice of allowing is, I find, one of the most powerful practices in the whole of the, you know, the Buddhist teachings, the whole of the Dharma, um, bringing a quality of allowing our experience to be as it is. You could almost say that all of our suffering, or a great majority of our suffering, actually comes from not allowing, from not allowing ourselves to really feel what we're feeling, to truly experience what we're experiencing. You could say that, that our suffering actually comes from not being willing to be with what is. Because when we're not being willing to be with what is, what we tend to do is we grasp for things that will make us feel good because we don't want to feel what we're feeling or to push away what we don't like or don't want, you know, as, as a way of escaping from what we're feeling or of spacing out so that we don't, we don't have to feel what we're feeling. So many ways in which we, we avoid our experience, we act things out, we blame, we get angry, we get anxious, we get worried. Um, and I think all of these are ways of escaping really from our, from our, uh, from our actual experience. And what I want to look at today and explore today in these reflections is how, how allowing ourselves to feel what we're feeling is really at the core of the Buddha's teachings and is essential to our health, our well-being, to our healing, to our growth, to our freedom, to allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling, to experience what we're experiencing, is really the pathway to freedom, to, to, to growth, to healing. So what is it to really allow ourselves to, to feel our feelings? To experience what we're, what we're experiencing. As I'm speaking, you might keep half of your attention or some good proportion of your attention on kind of an inward looking, an inward opening to your experience. You notice, you know, how do you, how do you feel in, in your body, you know, particularly in the torso and around the face and, you know, what are you noticing in your emotions and mind states right now? You know, what's, what is going on in the mind? You know, am I here or am I in some way kind of checking out or resisting what I'm feeling or wanting something? And in a very kind and non-judging way, not to beat ourselves up, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. No, that's not so helpful. But just to notice if we are, if our mind somewhere else, or if we're judging ourselves or judging, oh, I don't like that jacket that somebody's wearing. Or, or <clears throat> you know, why did they paint their living room that color? <laughs> you know, or whatever it might be that's coming up, just to notice that with kindness, with, a, with friendliness. We get to see these things about, 
you know people's you know people's spaces maybe we were we were talking at the very beginning about um about students in college or in school um who who uh, don't turn their camera on you know and maybe not wanting and maybe in for many uh, it might be for very good reasons but you know just kind of showing up as 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 an avatar or as a name sometimes and um but we do have we do uh, have the uh, we are able to see into each other's gardens or into each other into each other's living rooms etc um, that's kind of adds and an, for me it adds a nice dimension gives 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 folks a kind of a context that we wouldn't normally normally see and i, I enjoy that um, so what is it to really allow ourselves to to feel our feelings to feel what we're experiencing all of us probably or certainly unless we're coming here for the first time today we've all heard the meditation instructions to allow ourselves to feel our feelings you know i often speak about welcoming the guests you know rumi's image Rumi's metaphor as you know one that i find helpful like oh yeah these are guests coming to visit or can be experienced as guests we've probably heard of you know the invitation to say yes to what is you know say yes how is it to say yes to what we're experiencing rather than saying no how does it feel different to say yes to welcome our experience you know the power of, of the power of saying yes to what we're experiencing um you know i i often share uh, dorothy hunt's poem of um you know peace is this moment without judgment you know how is it to find peace in this moment with whatever we're experiencing without judgment but even though we've heard these instructions, these invitations many, many times, maybe even hundreds of times, we probably still experience, we, um, there's that expression that the instructions may be honored more in the breach. You know, we honor the, you know, we honor the instructions more in not doing them in, than in doing it, not doing it than in doing it. You know, like we, that, that it is that it's easier said than done it's one thing to say you know let yourself feel let yourself experience what you're experiencing meet your experience have that be your way of seeing your experience your way of being with your experience to to really bring this attitude of allowing but when it actually comes down to doing it it's not so easy is it you know when the mind is kind of saying yeah but what about you know but what about if he wins you know what about if it, this happens or what about if that happens you know then the mind then it's not so easy to say to allow so just to recognize that um that it's that it's in practice is even though we may have heard it many times maybe done it many times okay i'm going to allow myself to feel what i'm feeling to touch into my experience right now it's often not easy to do so when um when we're experiencing something that's difficult something painful something challenging and for many of us our default even if we have a long time practice our default can be to avoid in certain areas perhaps in many areas to avoid what we're feeling because it's painful because it causes us fear you know it's a place we don't want to go to i don't want to feel this so we we have ways of checking out ways of avoiding our our experience maybe it's unknown i don't want to go there because it could be scary it could be too difficult or it would feel unpleasant to go to that experience so we have ways of walling ourselves off from our experience you know that that famous um, fdr expression you know we have nothing to fear but fear itself for me that's a good expression a good example of 
we're not going into the fear because we're afraid of the fear. We put a barrier around the fear itself. We fear the fear. And, you know, in many of the same ways, we have aversion to feeling aversion. You know, we don't want to feel the unpleasant thing. So we're kind of pushed that away. We add that. You know, I spoke last week about a second arrow. We add that second arrow of aversion. I don't want to feel the unpleasantness. So we put a wall around the unpleasantness. So we have that secondary experience, secondary defensive experience. So we don't want to feel what we're feeling so that we armor ourselves from it. Often the armor we've developed through a lifetime you know, maybe a lifetime of beliefs about ourselves that prevent us from going, from feeling something painful, maybe a painful emotion, because it reminds us perhaps of something we've experienced in the past. And that was too painful in the past. Maybe it was too painful for us when we were a kid, when we were shamed or embarrassed about something. So we don't want to go there anymore. You, you know, we've, we've developed ways coping mechanisms so we don't have to go there so that we have strong ways mechanisms kind of escape mechanisms to avoid feeling what we're feeling i i've i've come in the last few days you know we like to put things in acronyms you know rain is one of them and allowing is part of rain the rain acronym recognize allow investigate and originally not identify tara brock you calls that n um, nurture compassion what however you do it but i have one it's 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 called ppe ppe you know we know a pr personal protective equipment But in, in relation to what I'm talking about here, allowing, PPE is push, pull, and escape. Push, pull, and escape. You know, the, the, our clinging and our aversion are really pushing and pulling. We're pushing away and we're holding on. We're pulling towards us. So we push away unpleasant feelings. We have an unpleasant bodily feeling. We want to change it. I don't like this. I want to get rid of it. I don't like this pain. I don't like this discomfort. We have a difficult emotion where, where that we're feeling fear or we're feeling anxiety or we're feeling anger or blame. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to feel that. So we cover it up in some way. We push it away. We repress it. Sometimes we act it out. We act it out. Um, um, we act out anger or blame in order to not feel what we're feeling. I come back, I was going to share it a little later, but I come back to it, come to it now. The, the uh, say what, what um, great writer and activist, uh, civil rights, human rights, um, James Baldwin, um, said i imagine one of the reasons people cling to their hates so stubbornly it because is because they sense once hate is gone they will be forced to deal with pain imagine once one of the reasons people cling to their hates so stubbornly is because they sense once hate is gone they'll be forced to deal with pain so we we often act out <clears throat> anger, blame, even hatred in the world as a way of not feeling what we're, what we're feeling, not experiencing what we're experiencing. We can see that, I feel I can see that in the highest levels of government, of how, <clears throat> how the other is blamed in order to avoid, <clears throat> in order to avoid feeling what I'm feeling, that I can act it out on others, I can blame others, I can judge others. They're the people, they're the reason why we're feeling what we're feeling, why we're in danger. You know, that's often the, the language that's used, so we blame the others. 
we blame the Muslims or we blame immigrants or whoever it might be. So we push away. <clears throat> so that's the first pushing. We repress or act out what we don't want to feel, blaming or judging ourselves. We move away from unpleasant bodily feelings. You know, we often add a second arrow rather than feeling the, what the, the unpleasantness. We, we do something to comfort ourselves. You know, maybe we might, well, we might judge ourselves, we might blame ourselves, but we could avoid the feeling in other ways. We could have another glass of wine or take a drug or, you know, numb ourselves in different ways. So that's the first thing, pushing, pushing away our, our experience which is a way that we don't allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling. The other way is we pull towards us what we want or feel we need. So we can get caught up in that by clinging to pleasant experiences. You know, we often cling to pleasant experiences as ways of avoiding the unpleasant experiences. You know, we don't want to feel the unpleasant. So we, you know, again, we could, we might take a drug and, and, and then that we become dependent on that or we become dependent on alcohol or some other, maybe some other things, maybe somewhat less, more innocuous, you know, but even then maybe not very completely obnoxious not obnoxious, innocuous, um, you know, eating cookies or sweets, you know, and again, those can become, you know, kind of addictive, maybe not in quite such harmful ways, but maybe in harmful, equally harmful ways sometimes. So this pulling towards us is a way that we're, we're avoiding, um, allowing ourselves to feel what we're feeling. And this clinging as well as the aversion, um, clinging to pleasant experiences, ties us to suffering. We suffer when we do this. We don't see that we can't actually cling to anything. And when we try to, we suffer. So this is another way, pushing, pulling. We avoid feeling what we're feeling. We don't allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling. And the third way is, to, is really escape pushing, pulling, and escaping. Escaping is often spacing out, disconnecting from what we feel is boring or uninteresting. You know, in many ways we can do that. We can, we can get lost in the internet just following, you know, um, links taking us one place and taking us another, or we can binge watch movies and or we can just get caught up in our heads, all the different ways that we can space out and really kind of escape from our lives and escape from our feelings, numb our feelings in that, in that way. These are all classical examples of what the Buddha gave the overall term clinging to, you know, ways of avoiding our experience that lead to suffering. You know, classically, they're spoken about as greed, aversion, and delusion. <coughs> Sometimes greed, hatred, and delusion. So this PPE, pushing, pulling, escaping, uh, uh, kind of maybe everyday language to describe the way we, we don't allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling. So there's a great question that we can ask ourselves. I find it a really helpful one. What would I have to feel right now if I were not to take, take one of these escape routes of pushing, pulling, or escaping? What would I have to feel? What would I have to allow myself to feel? Because, and that's a question, whenever we're caught up in suffering, that's a, I, a, a very good question to ask ourselves. Because we're caught up in something. We're craving something. We're caught up in aversion or we're caught up in some form of delusion, some form of disconnection, escaping. So that question, what would I have to feel if I weren't doing this, if I weren't taking my own escape mechanism? And we all have our own escape mechanisms, you know. Some of us it's anger, judgment, blame of ourselves, of others. 
others it's numbing ourselves you know others it's kind of spacing out um you know going into our heads can be a way of doing that just kind of avoiding our feelings not 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 wanting to open to our emotions is a way that we can do that you know all the different ways that we escape what would i have to feel right now if i want if i want to take this escape route or the one that i'm that i'm taking what am i avoiding what am i what am i what am i not allowing myself to feel So maybe take a moment now to check in to, with your own experience in this moment. You could close your eyes and bring awareness to whatever is present. Make space for what's here. You could ask yourself, how is it to genuinely allow this feeling or this sensation or this emotion, or this thought to be present. How is it to allow this, maybe tightness in the belly, or this feeling of restlessness, this feeling of tiredness? You know, and if, say if there is a feeling of tiredness, Get close to it. How is it to really allow the feelings that I give this name tiredness to, to really let myself feel that? Maybe tiredness might be a, just some tension around the, the eyes or around the forehead, maybe accompanied by a you know, certain kind of lassitude or lethargy or maybe a little bit of collapsing physically and just how would it be to to allow this feeling to come and to go whatever's here how is it to to allow this whatever's present whatever's calling for your attention and we can use the breath to give room to what's here letting the feelings and the sensations come and go arise and pass how is it to to let whatever is here make space for it let it be as big as it wants to be you can imagine the the container of awareness as being large enough to include whatever is here making space around anything that's difficult. How is it to bring an attitude of genuinely allowing this moment, this experience to, to be here, to be as large as it wants to be, to be as intense as it wants to be, as strong as it wants to be. And how is it to, to bring this attitude, this quality of heart, to difficulties that come up for you in your life? How is it to in, invite this attitude of allowing? You know, imagine yourself in a really, maybe a more difficult situation than you might be in right now. You might have heard some difficult news, health news, or news about a friend or about work or about situation in the country. And imagine yourself really bringing this attitude of allowing to whatever is to what's here. In a time like this that's so difficult you know when the pandemic is adding stress and uncertainty to our lives 
and when in our political world it seems that so many have taken a wrong road you know a road that doesn't seem to lead to well-being and happiness in some way maybe a lost maybe using kind of biblical language following a false prophet who leads with cruelty and division it can feel like a, a natural response to to not allow ourselves to feel what we're feeling to to kind of go into our minds to go into judgment to go into blame go into a kind of sense of separation of us and them maybe go into checking out switching off what we're feeling maybe kind of going numbing ourselves through food or drink or electronic habits and just recognizing those tendencies perhaps in the mind habits of the mind to do that and just inviting this quality of allowing allowing ourselves to feel what what we're feeling right now making space for it when we do shut off in these ways what we're actually doing is where you can open your eyes if you like if they're closed or stay and just stay in a more meditative mode whatever feels helpful to you when we do this escaping we're actually shutting off part of ourselves and one of the things i think we do and don't do is i think we shut down the possibility of opening to hope to a to a sense of vision for the future i think we shut down to joy you know when we escape in these ways we actually shut down to the possibility of joy the possibility of hope and I, I was just thinking in the last few days, it's, you know, the couple of days, just thinking about what I wanted to share today, um, you know, in these and in these times, talking about these times. <clears throat> I feel for myself that there are ways in which I don't feel I've allowed myself to be very hopeful to dream or envision possibilities you know i think i'm not so much talking in my own personal life but in our collective life in the country and in the world that i feel for myself and i don't want to generalize for everyone but just given the time that times that we're living in that that i and i think we have been in a kind of survival mode you know kind of wanting needing to get through this time you know hoping in some ways for better times but but also kind of in some ways perhaps shutting down on really a sense of dreaming and hoping and i was sort of thinking about that for myself in in these last few days of of really wanting as as you know some possibilities of change have opened up more clearly and again not wanting to assume anything in any way you know which i think could be very very counterproductive in these in these days but actually kind of wanting to hold a balance of opening to hope um, while still staying very grounded in the truth of what we're living in you know the truth of the period we're living in and a period where anything can happen not just around the election but anything can happen in these next three months or so and again without getting into the details and getting becoming quote too political about things recognizing that a lot can still happen so so being very grounded in the truth you know the reality of that but actually wanting for myself to open to 
you know, if things unfold in a positive way over these coming weeks, wanting what we can create, what we can build, what we can dare to envision, you know, as possible around, you know, around justice, around racial justice, around economic and social justice in this in our society around climate change you know how, what can we do what would that look like what would it look like in terms of policies what would it look like in terms of our own individual behaviors and lives and actually beginning to consciously move in the direction of hope because even in the darkest times I think we have to have hope, you know. I think of, <clears throat> I think of people living, you know, enslaved people in this country living for almost two and a half centuries, you know, between 1619 and really 1863, 1860, yeah, 1865, really. Um, people living in slavery <clears throat> and keeping hope alive, you know, really, <clears throat> really not giving up hope, not giving up hope, even in, in the, the darkest of days of seeing the possibility and using, using their faith and their community the community as a way of 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 maintaining that hope and through the century of jim crow you know between you know recon well the end of the civil war and reconstruction and you know the mid 60s as as the possibilities of change and the legislation and the policies changed and opened up um, that period of of, of how hope was kept alive and in in the commune in, in other communities in you know in the um, uh, among women the, the possibility of suffrage of voting of being recognized as full full participants in the society and L people lgbtq people um when um you know when when to be fully oneself was not possible and and so many people um you know had felt had no choice but to live you know a closet closeted lives of of still keeping hope alive in all these all our communities that make up this kind of this this tapestry this rainbow of who we are as a people and as a world um that hope was was a key to to any any way of living you know living living fully or at least you know living our lives living living life you know maybe it wasn't fully maybe it was still partially but just of that sense of hope and i've spoken a lot i mean a lot at different times about i've been thinking a lot about you know about grief you know, and the term, you know, that I've used is, is unmourned grief. Um, the ways in which we haven't had the, um, the opportunity, perhaps, or the ability to process, to metabolize all the, all the pain and all the suffering. You know, how many of us have really been able to take in the, the pain and the magnitude of, of the, of the children in the cages and separated from their families. Um, the pain in immigrant communities, the pain of communities under, under, under attack and under threat, you know, the different communities in our larger community and how we carry that grief, that unmourned grief, unprocessed grief, we carry it in our bodies, we carry it in our psyches and you know, in the time ahead, I would love for us to find ways to, to really talk about, you know, for me, it's coming together <clears throat> in the language of grief and hope, 
then in order to be able to be a, to be able to fully hope we have to really open to our grief and our unprocessed our unmourned grief um, that we're not able to fully open until we've opened to all of our pains to all of our suffering that we've allowed ourselves coming back you know really focusing allowing ourselves to feel what we're feeling how do we how do we do this individually how do we do it as a community as our community and, and as the larger community to open fully to you know as fully as we can individually and collectively to our pain and to our grief and to our hope you know what can we hope for what can we envision this is really the path of the of the bodhisattva and you know at times i've spoken of that of the sense of us individually and collectively perhaps as bodhisattvas as choosing to envision a path of 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 hope and of possibility for ourselves and for our community a path of of freedom so you know coming back to again to to that um and that, a, a very, the very very wise saying of of carl jung what is not brought into consciousness comes to us as fate what is not brought into consciousness comes to us as fate i mean that that statement that thing he said is a dharma talk in itself just to reflect on that of what do what happens when we don't bring our pain into consciousness as james baldwin said it it so easily manifests as othering it manifests as hate if we don't feel what we're feeling then it does get acted out in our own individual lives and in our collective lives as 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 suffering as blame as judgment as aversion as hate and we see it so clearly now in our in our political world how un, unprocessed pain is acted out as as suffering as blaming as judging as hating as othering and there's another way and that's what the these teachings and practices point us towards another way where we do we are able to process our pain we are able to un to process our unprocessed unmourned grief so that we don't have to act it out in the world that what can come out of us come from us can be compassion can be wisdom can be kindness <clears throat> can be kindness and that we become re really vehicles for for love in in our world for compassion in our world each one of us i think this is the the promise really of 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 these teachings and the promise of of bringing these teachings more fully into these times that we're living in that we can we can go into the world and be in the world in these unusual times um, as you know i was i was never um i was never a particular fan of um, the older bush or the younger one although there were co co qualities that he had that i think were, were were in some ways kind of noble but he had that expression that was that a hundred or a thousand what let's call it a hundred thousand points of light <laughs> the points of light that we kind of can be these these kind of lights um you know illuminating uh you know the darkness in a way and <laughs> cade me la falta the hundred thousand welcomes in ireland in irish um the hundred thousand points of light the thousand points or however many it is 27 points of light so I want to share that reflection today the reflection of, of around really around this theme of allowing how how can we and so we'll go into a, a period of meditation before 
um, Emily leads us in some movement and we'll do some sharing. Um, and invite us to kind of take this into consciously into practice of allowing. So take some moments to, to arrive and settle. Close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that and let your attention come inward. Letting the awareness drop down out of the head, down into the body, feeling the contact with the surface beneath you, feeling the body here in the space where you are. Connecting with your breathing. Maybe allowing your breath to deepen and letting the deeper breathing help you to settle even more, to relax even more, settle into being here. Maybe taking a few longer, deeper breaths. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, relaxing the body. Breathing out, relaxing, calming the mind. Just inviting the sense of relaxing. Creating a sense of ease, well-being, just being here. Inviting a smile, if that's helpful, to help you to relax a little bit more, settle a bit more. Inviting an image of a loved one, if that's helpful. Dear friend or a family member, beloved pet, child, grandchild. Letting the smile help, help you soften any areas of tightness and tension. You'll be inviting the smile into the body and into the heart area. Feeling the smile from inside your body inside your heart. Taking a moment to be grateful for some things in your life that easily invoke gratitude, appreciation. Loved ones. nature, measure of health, good health, sense of security, well-being. Maybe being part of community, the gift of your practice, so many things in our our lives that we can be grateful for, but we're so often focused on what's wrong or what's not working or what we lack. We can come back to just shift the, the focus and we turn the spotlight inward to, to what we already have. Letting that be a kind of a platform from which we open to whatever is here right now.
and inviting you to open to whatever is whatever's present for you right now in the body, <clears throat> in the heart, the emotions, in the mind. How is it to make space to allow whatever's here to be here? To come, to go, to arise, stay for a while and then pass in its own time and space. And what we all we need to do is make space for what's here, to allow, allow this feeling to be as it is, to meet it with kindness. It's helpful letting the breath be a, be a home base for you, just resting your attention in the experience of the breath, of breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in, it's knowing that you're breathing in. Breathing out, knowing that you're breathing out. Coming back, when you notice the mind is off in stories or plans or memories, just gently and kindly coming back. Allowing whatever is here to be here, to come and to go. Meeting what's here with kindness, with acceptance. You might find it helpful at times to just put a hand on your heart, maybe on your belly. It's a way of connecting with with your experience, with your life in this moment. Feeling the warmth of your hand on your, on your heart, on your chest.
and inviting uh, an attitude of allowing, allowing what's here to, to be here, to come and go, feeling of anxiety or stress or of restlessness or of tiredness of grief or sadness or joy, peace or a sense of con contentment. Whatever's here, can it be held in kindness? Without judgment. This is a poem called Grief by Denise Levitov. Ah, grief, I should not treat you like a homeless dog who comes to the back door for a crust, for a meatless bone. I should trust you. I should coax you into the house and give you your own corner, a worn mat to lie on your own water dish. You think I don't know you've been living under my porch. You long for your real place to be readied before winter comes. You need your name, your collar and tag. You need the right to warn off intruders, to consider my house your own and me your, your person and yourself my own dog. Taking your time, bringing your awareness back into collective space and invite Emily to, uh, to lead us in some movement, if you're ready, Emily. Yes, I am. I invite everyone to just stand up and reach up and start to gather the energy of the sun, its light, its warmth, cultivating it, and then bring it to your heart. And then cultivate the energy of this group, the community and kindness and love and bring that to your heart. And then cultivate the energy of the earth, its abundance, the harvest, and bring that to your heart. We'll start with six movements of the spine. And we'll each one turn to your right, breathing in. Exhale to the right, 
and center to the right and center and to the right and center. Now three times to the left, left and center, left and center and left and center. Drop your hands, not your arms, and rise. Drop and rise and drop. Now lift up, reaching up, clasp your right hand in your left wrist and tilt towards the left, breathing into your right rib cage. And exhale to center. Switch hands. Breathe in to lift up. Exhale, tilt. Breathe into your rib cage. And exhale to center. Float those arms down. And now gather your hands behind your waist and lengthen your arms as you exhale, lift your head, lift your chest, back to your waist. Inhale, lift and extend out. Exhale to the waist. Last time, inhale, lift and extend Exhale and float the arms. Do your own dance for the moment. Chest swinging out, opening up. And then the last move is to place your hands above your knees. Inhale, reach up, extending, lengthening, and drop down. Exhaling dropping down to wherever is comfortable for you. Deep breath in here, exhale with a sigh. <sighs> and then bring your arms out into a T and lift up. Place your hands at heart center. And release to the world. Now to the world and then to the earth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Emily. Thank you. It's lovely as always. It's great to get into our our bodies and kind of feel places that we might be haven't connected with for a while so it's lovely um mark um i'm thinking uh, today because of time that we will just uh, stay together in the big group um we've we've the last i think a number of weeks we've gone into small groups and i know folks love to do that and it's great to share in that way but occasionally when we go maybe if the talk goes on a little longer we can uh, we can stay in the, in the full group and um, please feel free um, to use the chat box to um, to share anything you know of how you're doing um, how how the meditation was for you how the movement was for you how the you know anything that the talk was for you and how you're doing and uh, it's a lovely way of sharing because obviously with 70 or 80 people we don't um uh we, we're not going to be able to hear from everybody even even in the way we we used to when we were together in uh in uh in tenley town we'd try and go around and have the person share the name and um you know just maybe a word or two of what's present for them but even then that would probably take you know half an hour so but we can use the chat box to do that. And we can uh, take a few minutes now, if anything, anyone would like to share, you know, anything that's coming up for you or any, um, 
any question you might have um, for me or for the group. Um, Jenna said, would you do a Dharma talk on that Carl Jung quote sometime? I, I would like to, I'd like to do that. Yeah, such a rich quote, such a rich saying, what isn't brought into consciousness comes to us as fate. Yeah. Um, and Cassie asks, what, what's your suggestion for when the feeling we're trying to allow is too overwhelming? Yeah, I, I know Tara talks about resourcing, wondering what you recommend. Yeah, I actually meant to, meant to say, say something about that. So I'm really glad you brought it up um, because it is important. It can be easy to, I mean, it, you know, when I said kind of easier said than done, it's particularly the case when we're experiencing something that is very painful, perhaps something traumatic. And then it really, we, we really don't have even the capacity to do it, much as we might want to allow the mind, the brain is kind of saying, and, and particularly in the case of trauma, is saying, no, no, you can't. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I mean, I'm, I'm talking in kind of anthropomorphic, whatever the, you know, personifying the mind, you know, as though it were kind of an executive there. But, but in fact, you know, we're not actually capable of doing that because it's too, the, the pain is too much. So we either become overwhelmed or we, we dissociate. We just kind of check out completely. So it's such an important question when and not just in terms of trauma sometimes it can we just don't feel we have the resources to allow ourselves to feel maybe we're tired maybe we're t we're so stressed out that you know we might want to say okay can i allow this but in fact what the mind is actually saying is no you know it's like no no i'm not willing to then there's a lot, there's many, and you mentioned the, um, the word resources, uh, Cassie, which is so important. Res what are the, what can we, where can we go to at those times when we recognize that we don't have the resources just to say, yes, I'm going to allow this. And some of the simple practices that we do at the beginning of the meditation, you know, coming back to the breath, taking deeper breaths can be a very powerful resource. You know, just reflecting, you know, if we're in a place of real pain or stress, um, reflecting on gratitude could be a resource. Thinking about a loved one, you know, connecting with if we have a pet, you know, a beloved cat or a dog, you know, a, a kind of, t you know, connecting with them, you know, petting them, you know, you know, holding them or a loved one, you know, connecting with a, with a loved one. Um, in many, many ways, and what many, many res resources that are potentially available to us, what I think is really helpful in response to your question, I think, would be to think in advance, to really reflect in our own lives, what are the resources that we have available that when things do get really tough and we don't feel we have the resources just to allow ourselves to feel this fear that we're feeling or this worry that we have or this anger that we have that we can go to those places that we can go to those places in our minds it may be a memory it may be a memory of a beloved grandmother you know who was always there for us or a parent or a loved one or a dear friend, you know. So the more that we can connect with resource with our resources, um, a teacher that I've shared, I've shared a bit about in recent times, Rob Berbea, who I've I've listened to, probably going almost going on a couple of hundred of his talks in the last half a year, has an expression. He he speaks about. Um, developing um, an inner reservoir of well-being so that we use our practice itself as a resource um, through 
you know, through really deepening into meditation, through developing calm in meditation, developing a sense of well-being through our practice, so that when we are in those really tough places, we have a natural resource that we can, we may not be able to easily just fall back into a place of, you know, peace or well-being, but we know that that's available to us. And maybe we can connect with that in some way, almost like we're going to a well to get water when we're feeling really, really thirsty, you know, in the midst of a drought, you know, we feel I can go to those places. So what I would, you know, I think the best answer is really to invite us all to think about, you know, what are our our resources what are the resources that each of us have that when we're in those really tough places where it's hard to allow those aren't easy times to really think anew about you know about the resources that are available to us but if we've thought about those in advance and we know that they're there for us that we can then in those difficult times we can more easily access them so I think that's kind of what I'd like to share um, in relation to that. And I think, Cassie, you're great at, at letting us know when people want to ask a question or share. Um, I'm not seeing anybody in the chat and probably I should be looking in the participants, right? Um, iPhone Bill, iPhone 7 Bill W. <laughs> um, I just ordered a new 12 actually. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't been into the, into the kind of, got to get the new phone, but I thought I, I could do with a nice, a, a new one now. I've had mine for a number of years, so. And they, ha they have it in blue, so. Um, <laughs> but I'm not craving. It's, um, iPhone 7, Bill, um, would you like to share? You had your hand up. Maybe we're not able to. Um, if you'd like to uh, um, raise your hand in the reaction box, if anyone, and I'll just scroll scroll through. Um, which got got three or four. Yeah, I yeah. finally found it. Where? Who is it? Yeah. This is Bill. Okay, Bill. Yeah, my son has a oh, new Bill, one. Oh, Bill! 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 Great yeah. to see you. <laughs> I love I love his camera, but. Uh, you know, he's always into getting new things and uh, I say, well, what is it going to do that you can't do with your old one? And sometimes there's not a good answer to that question. But what I was thinking of, I love your emphasis of allow in this particular uh, setting. Um, there is a prayer that uh, I know that many people in the rooms and outside of the rooms used to help them to get through tough times. It's a serenity prayer, but I have my own version, which goes, may I have the serenity to allow the things I haven't changed yet, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And, you know, that's something that I just use for my personal use. I say it in rooms and people that know me listen for the yet. But, uh, you know, it's a, a quirk that an old man has. And uh, the other thing that came up during your speaking um, was Dorothy Hunt. And since you introduced me to her so many years ago, uh, Peace is This Moment Without Judgment has been something I rely, try to rely on heavily. Um, find a lot of moments. Uh, sometimes I even find a little peace, but the, the judgment piece sort of gets in the way and uh, I'm still trying to figure that out. I, have a personal belief that, uh, you know, 
judgment is a rather heavy duty term. Um, mm. We all have preferences. And not having judgment doesn't mean you, you don't have prefer preferences, but I suppose it's the realization that everybody doesn't have the same preferences. And if you want uh, people to respect yours, you have to respect theirs. So mm. that, that's what I was thinking of through this. Thank session. you, Bill. It's 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 great to great to hear your voice and really really so happy that you are with us today. One request for you is um, could you if you could you uh, type? I would, uh, maybe you're not in a position to do it, but I was wondering if you could type your adapted version of the Serenity Prayer in the in the chat box. I think people could get a lot from your adaptation. That was kind of a reflection um, I, I had, and really grateful for what for what you shared. And uh, yeah, that that whole the question you raised as well about um, about um, judgment is an important one because we don't, you know, we we want to have judgment in the sense of we want to have discernment. We want to be able to make clear delineations and make clear choices about what's helpful and what's not helpful etc um, and the kind of judgment that we often talk about in you know in the Dharma practice and what Dorothy Hunt's poems uh, speaks to I think is where where we make separation you know our judgment is a basis for separation we judge ourselves better than worse than not as good as you know we judge ourselves we're not we're not doing things as we should be and it's that kind of it's a kind of aversive judgment i i think that we you know if we wanted to add an adjective to judgment that uh, that we're trying to um soften and lessen and maybe even let go of while maintaining discernment you know we need judgment to know what wise action is and what compassionate action is so we need judgment so yeah just to make that that distinction um i um i'm conscious of time so what i think we'll do is we'll just finish with a relatively short meditation maybe 10 or 12 minutes or so so I invite you to um to sit in a way that's relaxed and comfortable And let yourself drop into the body, what you're experiencing right now. Relaxing the breathing, maybe taking a deeper breath or two, letting yourself settle. meeting what's here with kindness is it possible to allow what's here to be here Allow yourself to feel what you're feeling right now, to experience. What you're experiencing in your consciousness, in the body, in the mind, in the heart. <clears throat> And if you experience something that it's very hard to allow, hard to open to, 
see if you can have the intention, the wish to allow, even if you're not able to right now, even if it feels too difficult, feel the need to push it away, resist it. See if you can have that intention, a wish to, to open. Our aspiration, our wish really is to, to be able to allow all of life to, to move through us, to not be in a place where we, where we need to resist or push away experiences, that we can open to whatever is here, however difficult and however painful but recognizing that this is a journey. We may not be at the place where we can right now meet this, but we can, as much as we can, make space for, for what's here. As much as we can, as, as fully as we can, as kindly as we can. And holding all that you're experiencing right now in a field of kindness, of loving kindness. Can you meet your own experience with an open heart, with a welcoming attitude, allowing what's here? to come and go. You might appreciate your, yourself for taking the time to be here to practice, to open and allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. And feel yourself here, not just as an isolated individual, but feel yourself here as part of part of a community, part of this community. Held with shared intentions, intention to, to live wisely and kindly, to be kind to ourselves and to others to act wisely in the world, to not deepen and exacerbate suffering, not bring suffering into the world, to have that intention. Feel us all held together by our shared practice, practices, our shared intentions all with our own individual expressions, but held in this larger field of, of kindness. You might send a wish of loving kindness out to, to everyone, to all of us here, collectively or individually, is may you be safe, free from harm. May you be happy, truly happy. May you be peaceful.
May you live with ease and with kindness. Taking in any feelings of kindness, loving kindness, taking in the wishes of others for our well being, for our happiness, for our safety and peace. Letting our wishes of loving kindness go out into, into the world, into around the country, millions and millions of people voting, much hope, much anxiety, maybe sending our wishes of well-being, of happiness, peace out to all, all beings, to everyone, no matter who or what they vote for or believe in. Connecting with our, what we have in common as human beings, as sentient beings. Just letting our loving kindness go out to include, to, to include everyone everyone in the society and throughout the world, including to the non-human beings, the other sentient beings, beings of the air and the water and the land and under the ground. Just wishing that all be, be safe, be peaceful, be free of suffering. This from Rumi, the breeze at dawn. The breeze at dawn has secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are moving back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. <laughs> 